Hello and welcome to Coffee and Bonsai with Tom. Well, I did it again. We have a new tree here. Um, hopefully it'll be the last. Uh, we're kind of running out of any kind of reasonable weather to be doing much with the, with the tree. But I couldn't resist it, and um, it kind of made me think of a subject that I really want to talk about. So I'm going to kind of lead with that. And uh, I'm just going to call it the dream, you know. Um, and I see this really, you know, commonly in... Uh, you know, bonsai hobbyists, those of us that are obsessed with trees. And, um, you know, I really, I, I think it has to do with, um, you know, seeing the future or the possibilities of, you know, some material that we happen to find. Um, and I mean, it could, it could be anything, you know, it could be, I don't know, we like the trunk or the bark or, um, in this case, which I'll get into in a bit, the flowers or, um, you know, the size, like it's sort, it's sort of endless. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm wondering, um, if, uh, any of you've had this experience and you probably have, especially if you're watching this channel and probably others like it, um, you know, and that is, uh, you know, you have a tree that you're working on, you're super excited about it. Um, you know, like I mentioned, maybe it's the trunk or you like the bark or you really like the flow or the size, you know, there's just those certain trees that, you know, you just really are drawn to and really like, you know, really excites you something about it. And, um, and you notice that other people just don't see it, you know, especially, you know, friends or family that, you know, aren't obsessed by this stuff, you know, maybe they just sort of appreciate plants in general, but not bonsai in particular and in fact you know i had a friend he came by um we've been friends for a long time and i had all my trees outside he hadn't really seen them before so i came by and i'm showing him stuff you know and i think we just kind of walked up to the bench right and he was so drawn to this one really tall jade i have he goes oh, this looks like a baobab tree you know because he one of his hobbies is he likes to um, travel around, he's kind of semi-retired and he takes pictures of landscapes and trees and things. So I, I just love looking at his stuff. But anyway, he was just going on and on about this tree. And, um, you know, eventually I just, I asked him if he wanted it because, I mean, to be honest with you, it was a tree that I never cared for and I've been trying to work with for a while. And so, but, but, you know, right near this tree, tree, trees that I have literally been trying to get to look like a baobab for almost two years no mention of them you know so there you go i i feel like um this uh opportun opportunistic vision we have the dream you know where we sort of see what's maybe not there yet you know but we we see the the future and the opportunity and and we have a a dream and a plan and a goal for that particular tree. And, you know, I think that's where the excitement for bonsai for me comes in, you know. And I think it also explains why we have so many trees, uh, you know, on the road to just constantly seeing these things, you know, that that uh, we've kind of trained our brains to see. And so, well, so this is another case of that, this whole tree here. Um, and so let me show you the dream, or at least try to. Uh, with some pictures here. So I want to show you some pictures. This is a Chrysula sarcocollis, and it gets these pink and white flowers, which are just beautiful and apparently smell like um, honey or jelly. And it's also known as the uh, bonsai Chrysula. And here's a few pictures of bonsai. And so you can see, I mean, look at the, you know, it's got nice, nice bark and um, it has a nice trunk and a decent growth habit. And so I'm super excited about trying this. And I've been looking for one of these for a while. And, um, you know, so I would check my nurseries and whatnot. Just never found anything. So I don't, I don't think they're extremely rare, but um, I don't know. They seem to be hard to find. And I'm not sure why, but I, I've been on the lookout for quite a while because this easy flowering... Um, very attractive to me. I mean, my jades sometimes flower, but you really have to expose them to some cold in order for them to, at least I found, in order for that to happen. And so it's very inconsistent for me. So um, these apparently easily flower. 
So I'm really looking forward to that. And the, and the, I mean, just, you know, look at the, the, um, you know, they just seem like perfectly designed to try bonsai with. So I'm ex super excited to see how this works out. So here we are back to reality. Now, when I, I got this off Etsy and I'll put a link to the, the store and the details, but it was in, you know, they're, they're bare rooted and whatnot. So it was in kind of bad shape. So I just put it in this pot, you know, just to restore it to health before I did anything to it. Didn't do anything to the roots, just kind of shoved it in here, gave it some water, and just waited for it to look healthy again. Um, which I think has been achieved. So we're going to do some work on it. And um, I have an idea. And of course, you know, I like small trees, and this is just way too big. And I'm a little reluctant to give it the um, intense treatment here, but... You know, I just literally have a height restriction on what I can have, and I like small trees. And so, yeah, you know what we're, you know what, you know what I'm getting at here. Yeah, so I'm just trying to figure out where I want it. Uh, this is a really tall tree. Um, and I'm hoping it responds like other jades, but he who hesitates is lost. Here we go. Timber. Um, I'm just going to cut it fairly low so like i said i want it to be short and wow it cuts like butter like much much softer than than other jades and wow so here we go look at that enormous cutting and i really hope that this um type of jade behaves like the others that um that i'm quite used to but look at that i mean beautiful foliage and you know what we're going to do. I am going to make a forest with this. And we have this fancy little cutting here with decent roots. And we will put that aside and hope for recovery. So I'm going to take this large cutting. And you can see it has a lot of areas where it goes sort of. I'll just smooth this off. Where it goes from one branch to three. Which is not something I want. Um, but, you know, I do want to create a forest with this. And, you know, so I'm just going to start. Um, basically creating a bunch of cuttings from this, the shape of which I like. So first off, I'm going to fix this. You know, it basically looked like, a, I was going to say a yo-yo, but a slingshot, you know. And so I didn't want that. And, you know, if I look at the height here, you know, this is probably going to be uh, my main tree. So I'm just going to cut it off here. So it has a little bit of uh, shape there. And depending on how it recovers, we can do some more pruning and probably come out with something that we're happy with um so that that could potentially be tree number one and you know i'm not that sure about how this particular species recovers to heavy pruning so um i'm gonna leave as much green on as possible because in general i found with jades that you know they really use that um water and and energy in those leaves to try to regrow roots and so i'm going to first look on this one um yeah you know again it has this very sort of u-shape divisions everywhere uh so it might just be how this one likes to grow uh so i'm just going to cut these off i have a bunch of small trees to work with here and one sort of branching out interesting trunked one so i think you know if this works out that could be quite a cool little tree A couple things I'm noticing right away with this Crisula is just the trunk is much, much softer. It's like it doesn't have that fibrous, um, I don't know, sort of texture to it. It's almost like it's hollow inside. And it's interesting to me because I, I read that this, you know, this um, Sarcocallus can go down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which is astounding. I mean, where I live, it doesn't get that cold in the wintertime, so... Um, I may try to plant one or two of these outdoors. Um, not this year, because I think we don't have enough time for it to get started. But, you know, next year, because I think it would be kind of an interesting plant to have outside, or at least as a large potted plant outside. Or I guess I could just leave the forest outside, another option. Uh, but the other thing about this is the leaves are, you know, jades are, you know, the tops are kind of designed to 
break, you know, they either grow heavily and snap off and then a new tree starts as they root when they hit the ground. Um, and that, you know, that's one of the ways they spread, but these are like the, the foliage really soft and brittle, like much more so than like you touch this slightly aggressively, it just kind of sloughs off. And I think, um, I think that is probably this tree's, um, proliferate, proliferation, prolifer, <laughs> proliferation strategy. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Like I said, this is a new, um, you know, a new variety to me. And so I'll be learning as I go. Um, I'm just going to hope that what I'm doing here is not unreasonable for this, this type of plant. I also want to do a shout out to Scott Winnard at Let's Do Bonsai. Because he reminded me, I watched one of his uh, shows on his channel. It's a great channel. Check it out. Let's do bonsai, and um, and he's a great guy. I love I love his personality, and he has some really cool guests and goes to uh, bonsai conventions. It, it's a lot of fun. Anyway, he he just as an aside, he was showing us his sunroom. I'm just lining these up to get a feel for the forest placement, and and he showed one of these in bloom, and it reminded me. Yeah, I've been looking for one of those, and that's when I hit Etsy, and they just happen to have exactly one there. Um, and so thanks, Scott. That that's the reason you're to, you're to blame for this current dream, I guess I would say. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of cuttings here, and we have this big guy that I I mean, look at the root base on that. It's quite quite nice. So I think this in and of itself uh, will be a nice tree. But let's get to the potting of this, shall Let's we? Look at this beautiful pot. You can see I've got my wire menagerie in there, and um, I'm not going to show you how to do. Oh, you can see I paid forty dollars for this pot. Um, you can see I'm not going to. I've I've done this wiring technique. Um, this is how I like to do my forests. I basically put a wire in for tree. Um, I'll put a link in the show notes or the video details um, of another video where I really show you exactly how to do this, but you can kind of see what's going on. And so, yeah, this is always the fun part, the frustrating part, you know, figuring out where all these things are going to go in here. And I'm just showing you this. You can get a look at this foliage. It almost looks like, I don't know, I was going to say parsley, but more like, I don't know, some kind of Thanksgiving herb <laughs> you use to put in and on the turkey it's it's a very interesting foliage um and i'm super curious to see how these respond to pruning um oh and i also want to talk about blue pots i am a sucker for a blue pot i see this color and this kind of modeling and this is just your standard i'm going to just put some soil in this this time i'm going with um just fur bark and um red lava that i have because i like the color and I've just been experimenting to see uh, what my trees like. And jades are quite tolerant, as long as it's not too wet of a soil. Uh, and you can see this can have a ton of drainage. But anyway, to get back to the pots, you know, I love a blue pot. This is a Japanese pot. Um, I got it online out of California somewhere. And I just love these these blue pots. You know, I mean, I know... There's a lot of, you know, if you look at like cheap mall's eye or something, I'm thinking this big guy will go here in the middle. Um, you know, they're always a blue pot, right? And uh, so they've kind of gotten a bad rap, I guess. You know, people see blue and they think it's cheap. But, you know, I just love it. And like, you can imagine like when this forest is rocking and rolling and I've got these, I don't even know if this one's pink or white. But either of those colors is really, really going to pop with this blue pot, you know, with this blue and kind of red and green. And I've got kind of a bronzy trunk and, you know, whether it's pink flowers or white flowers, it's really just going to look amazing. So, so yeah, a lot of cheap malls eye come in blue pots. Uh... <laughs> but for my buddy, I, th I think there's a good there's a good reason. So, so I do not discriminate against blue pots. In fact, uh, I just really like them. I just really like them, and I really like this one. And I think this is going to work out great. So you know, I'm just kind of wire this guy in here, and um, I'm not um, 
you know, drying these out. You know, I'm just going to put them in here. It's super dry soil. And I'm just not going to water this until, um, you know, it looks it looks like the situation is quite dire, right? And then, and then I'll give them just a little bit of water. And then when they show me they're actually growing, well, then they can have a good drink. So as I said before, it, it can be challenging to figure out the placement of these. And, I mean, you can see we've got a lot of cuttings to put in here. And... You know, I I kind of wanted to look reasonable in the beginning, but what I found is, um, I mean, for the health of the jade plants, I leave as much foliage on as possible uh, because they use that to grow roots. And so, you know, this is just going to be sort of a mass planting when we're done, right? It's I'm not going to prune it. I'm not going to give it like multiple triangle shapes in the forest. But what I'm doing now is I'm going to try to, to put the trees um, where I think they might end up, you know, when I actually do do that after this is recovered and put on a lot of strong growth, and then I give it it first give it its first major pruning. Probably, I mean, I guess it could happen this winter. It depends on how these grow. In the cold, I've read that they really, you know, that's when they primarily grow is in the in the, sort of the winter time. So they might like my chiller area where it's quite cool and quite humid. Um, and so I'll just play it by ear and we'll see how they recover. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to, you know, just look at the main trunk shapes and, you know, put them roughly where I want them and allow them to recover. And then I'll probably, you know, give them their first heavy pruning. And probably next summer, you know move things around a bit like if i see um you know a tree that just looks wrong or i'll just kind of rethink the placement of it so i'm not you know i'm concerned about it now but i'm not extremely concerned about it now i think the wires are kind of in the right place as to how i want a forest but i may or may not get the trees in the right place and you know it really depends on how these cuttings respond um and at least for me, that's pretty common. And, you know, it, it, it works into the nature of bonsai, frankly. Like, everything is just constantly changing. You know, like, um, how can I explain that? Um, uh, let's Well, like, for example, like Nigel Saunders' channel. I love watching his channel because he shows, you know, the progress of the trees, which I also try to do on my channel, because I think that's super, super important to actually learning about this stuff. And, and to me, the number one thing is, um, you know, learning how to keep the plants healthy, right? Um, and then strategies for to get bonsai started, which I'm doing here, you know, take a bunch of risks in the very beginning, and hopefully it works out, and if not, learn from it, you know. But, you know, I would rather do something like this and end up with a pretty full forest that I can then tune because you can see these things look like they grow like crazy rather than, you know, spending a tremendous amount of time and then killing it, right? I'd, I'd rather <laughs> I want to fail fast. Um, but anyway, what I wanted to say about Nigel's channel is I, I really like it because um, if you watch a lot of, there's a lot of impressive bonsai channels out there. But oftentimes you'll see this beautiful tree come out, right? And even if you see someone style something that's a little rougher and they create this amazing creation, and then you never see it again, right? So you, you don't really get um, the picture of reality with, with bonsai, which is that, you know, these things constantly change, you know? Like there's there's really there's really no such thing as, as a finished tree. I, I remember... Um, I've really only bought one, what I would call finished bonsai. And by that, I mean, like, you know, it, it could have literally, I could have taken it out of the the bonsai nursery and put it in a show. And no one would have blinked an eye. It was, it was quite a nice looking tree. And, um, yeah, so I had gotten a little bonus at work and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this and have like one nice tree in my collection. It's the only, it's the only finished tree I ever bought. 
But it really surprised me. It was a Trident maple, and if you know anything about maples, there is a lot of maintenance. They grow like crazy. They put out all kinds of new leaves. You're constantly dealing with new leaves, branches. They grow roots like mad. Um, they are aggressive um, growers. And so I had this beautiful tree, and it looked it looked perfect for about two to three weeks, right? Um, and, you know, that's the nature of this, right? Any Anything is constantly changing, and you're constantly evolving it, and you are modifying it and tuning it, you know. Um, because at the, at the end of the day, you know, plants have to have to grow or they die, right? Now, as artists, right, we sort of try to constrain that in a finished tree, but even that, you can only get away with that for so long. Like, it, the tree really wants to put on robust growth in order to be robustly healthy, and it, there's just no way around that. So, you know, you're typically allowing them to grow out, and then you cut away some stuff you don't like, and then you just keep repeating that process. So, you know, especially in development, you're allowing the tree to aggressively grow in the direction that, in the ways that you want, right? And then cutting it back. Um, or with a finished tree, you know, you sort of, you know, I have several that I, I just try to, I w- want to keep the same shape. But they will get slightly larger over time. Um, and, you know, occasionally I just let them run wild to really regain their health and then kind of cut them back so for me it's very natural to you know put these in here let them go crazy and then start um you know start evolving it right because what i'll typically do is you know this will look really shaggy when we're done i'll let it recover you know some of them may die you know who knows it could it's weak now so it could get attacked by bugs you know, like it's it's you know I have to give it some some TLC to get it to get it to be strong. And then once it shows me it's strong, I will radically cut it back to probably two sets of leaves everywhere, and then prune for structure. And then I won't touch it again for. I mean, jades grow really fast, so in this case it may only be four months or something. But I'll let it run and then kind of repeat that process. And you know, by that time. You've got, um, you've got a good idea of how the tree grows, right? And how it likes to be watered. You know, you know how to keep it healthy. So it's a good time to take that step because you've learned enough about it, it even if it's a new species to you, that you know you have um, you have confidence to work on it. So, so you can see we're kind of taking shape here. I'm sort of going with one big tree here in the middle. And, uh, you know, kind of like some growing around it. But like I said, I'm not going to get too hung up on that. I just want to provide um, good growing room at the moment. Sometimes I, I like into creating these forests to, uh, I don't know, what's the old joke about, you know, how do you eat an elephant, you know, one bite at a time? It really is the same thing. You know, you sort of start with a tree and you keep adding them one at a time. Um, and you know, you spin it around and you look at like where you think it might look good. Um, and, uh, you know, what I find is like the further you go, like you're really sort of, you know, you're starting out at a very coarse level and then you're kind of going finer and finer. And usually by the end of it, I'm just throwing a few in near the edge because, um, I like to have a few extra trees. It's easy enough just to pull one out and pot it up and give it away or, you know, sacrifice it or whatever, but it's, it's always nice to have, um, some backup trees and also some very tiny trees that you can sort of layer in because it really does help give scale to what you're doing. All right. Um, and so, and like I said, I'm not, I have no idea how these are going to respond to this. So I'm, I'm doing a bunch of experiments in here as well. I'm even going to take just some cuttings, like cut the ends off um, of a few of these and just throw it in the pot, which I think it actually worked quite well because um, even when I was regrowing the the full tree, which we cut at the beginning to health, let's kind of zoom in here and have a more forest eye level look at this. 
You know, so a few uh, brand, like I said, this thing, you touch it and some of these ends fall off. And a few had hit the ground. And even in the few weeks that was recovering, it was actually growing roots. So I'm pretty confident these are strong rooters. Um, and, you know, this is kind of giving me, uh, you know, like a reed, reed forest vibe here at the moment. And that's fine with me. Um, like I said, we can always thin it out later. Um and I'm just going to put some more soil in because um, I'm pretty sure this is close to what I'm going to go with. So I'm going to get some in here. And I'll probably put some rocks in here as well just because it stabilizes things. I think it prevents the surface soil from from drying out as much. I mean, if you pick up a rock, like even in the middle of summer sometime you'll see it's wet under there when the soil around it is quite dry and the, you'll actually see the roots will seek that out you know so it's kind of kind of nice i feel um you know especially if you don't have moss like um, when i used to work with deciduous trees a, a lot they all had moss because i was watering them every day and if you think about it that layer of thick layer of moss on the top gives you you have much more of an ecosystem in your pot, right? Because that's probably the top 25. I mean, you're literally getting 25, maybe 30% more active, live, moist, working for you soil um, capacity, which you're not getting here. So I feel, and you know, succulents care a lot less about that. But I do find that they like the rocks. So that is a tip that I would sort of recommend. I mean, it not only keeps the the trees in place uh but it also i think provides some health benefits um particularly for new stuff like this that are you know you're going to let it get really dry but you want a slight amount of moisture in places right because the roots are very good at figuring that out so i'm just going to work in some of this soil there's not much to work in because there's no roots here but you know i find that even this sort of wiggling it around a bit you know kind of sets uh, sets it you know it sets that that stump stock in place and and really just kind of helps out yeah so i'm just going around and you know making sure you know i don't have any dips or holes and you know just kind of moving the soil around i have some extra wire here i'll come around and clip that off i don't often do that but but yeah just look at some of this foliage you can see how sort of floppy it is and so i'm very curious to see it looks like it branches pretty well i'm very curious to see um you know how i can work with this because um you know if this were healthy i would be cutting this back you know drastically and you know from the pictures i've seen online i showed in the beginning of the video it certainly looks like um it does respond well to pruning and will and will take on a bonsai shape so so yeah let's take a look at the forest you know it's a little jungly but uh you know we'll take care of that once it recovers and uh we prune it back let me just get some of this wire out of here i know where my wire cutters are misplaced at the moment so i'll just kind of use this and it doesn't hurt to leave a little extra wire in there in case you have to move a tree or replace it um i don't worry about it too much let's take a look at the top you can see it's not a bad placement i've got a little more room for things to grow there and so i'm pretty happy with this like i'm, I'm you know it's again it's that dream thing i talked about at the top of the video just imagine pink or white flowers all over this thing and we give it um you know kind of a nice triangular shape i really um just tickled pink i think this is really going to work out well once this recovers and we get it back to health and and on its way and please i welcome anyone who has um you know some actual experience with this variety of chrysula you know, please give me some details in the comments, you know. So here I am doing some, some triangle planning already. I can see you're going to have two there. But yeah, give me some comments. I mean, have I killed this thing? Uh, I certainly hope not. Um, 
is, you know, what do you think? You know, what's been your experience with this variety and how has it, how has it worked out for you? Um, cause I'm really happy with this and I'm super excited and I can't wait to see, you know, where it goes in the future in this beautiful blue pot. And, um, I lost my camera kind of turned off. So I'm going to show you here. I put in, um, some rocks. So I'll show you how that looks. Cause I really think it adds a lot of texture and we'll call this our victory lap. Uh, and I'll just show this to you once again. Um, and I did spray the foliage a little bit. I didn't want to get the soil wet, but I kind of wanted to perk it up a bit. And, um, there you go. So I think, uh, you know, that's pretty much it for today. And uh, the thought for the day, of course, the dream. We've covered quite a bit. And I want to thank you for spending time with me. And I look forward to seeing you all again very soon.